What's up everyone, Adam Saxon with Gyna Cube. I've got another roundup for you today, but before we get into that, I just wanna give a huge shout out to the organizers of SQL Saturday Atlanta. I was there with my family last weekend and we had a great time. There were great sessions, there was tons of food, and I loved connecting with all the folks that were there. There was also a little bit of craziness. I mean, come on, the theme was the Holy Grail from Monty Python, so what do you expect? But the organizers did a great job of putting everything together. And I just want to say that if you haven't been to a local SQL Saturday, you need to check it out. You need to go and participate in the community. All right, enough of that. Let's dig into the roundup. Dr. Layla Atati has released a free online... Wait, hang on. There we go. Dr. Layla Atati has released a free online book titled Analytics with Power BI and... R. That's right. She has been posting a lot about R and how to use it, how it works with Power BI, just how you can take advantage of it. And it's been fun to read her posts on that. She's been posting a lot. And she's put all this together into a free online book that you can download and start taking a look at. She highlights that if you don't know anything about R, you can absolutely get started with this and she will help you through that journey. She also gives some guidance of how to go through the sections and what to look at. So if you're interested in learning more about R and especially R with Power BI, be sure to take a look at this post and download that free ebook. Matt Allington did an article on when to use some versus some X in DAX. This is a follow-up article from something he posted about two years ago, and I love the insight that he has in this article. He really walks through and gives good examples for when's the right time to use both? And it comes down to understanding filter context and row context, which can be very confusing. I think Matt did a great job of explaining the difference between these two items and giving some solid examples of when to use one versus the other. But I wanna pass this off to you guys. What do you think? Do you have a preference about which one you should use? Do you have maybe some thoughts about what Matt said in there? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. We have a new white paper for analysis services, and this one has to do with model compare and merging for analysis services. This is made possible by the BISM Normalizer tool, which is now available on GitHub from an open source perspective. BISM Normalizer is integrated with Visual Studio, so you get the full DevOps capability from source control to build to just everything. So this can be really helpful for you if you're trying to manage just updates to your model from a build perspective and DevOps perspective. Not only does this work with analysis services on premises, but it works with Azure analysis services as well. So if you're interested in this, especially from a DevOps perspective, check out the white paper. I've got a link down below for this blog post, as well as every item I'm talking about in this roundup, including some bonus items. One of those bonus items is just an update for analysis services the release candidate that just came out, and it just talks about some updated DMVs, but you can go and check that out down below. Last month, we talked about Power BI Report Server. This month, we've got a release candidate for SQL Server 2017 reporting services. If you're interested in reporting services, you can go ahead and download the release candidate bits and install it. It is a standalone installer now. It is not part of the SQL setup, the main SQL setup installer package anymore, but it is still part of the SQL Server family. So you can go ahead and download that, install it, and give it a test run or a whirl. From a feature perspective, there's not a whole lot in this release. We do have the updated installer. It is available for you to go use and test and stay tuned for more updates on that front. There's a new update for the on-premises data gateway. So if you are running the on-premises data gateway, you wanna be sure to update to the latest version. This includes some updates for data connectors, including SAP BW Direct Query and the Snowflake connector. It also has an updated mashup engine. Be sure to update the on-premises data gateway to make sure that you are in sync with the Power BI service itself and the latest Power BI desktop update. And I will also throw in that if you are running the personal gateway, you don't have a lot of time. You need to update that to the new personal mode inside of on-premises data gateway. You have until July 31st to get that updated. Otherwise, it's gonna stop working on you. So be sure to check that out if you're using the personal gateway. Again, I wanna pass this off to you guys. What was your favorite item? What, what happened in the last week that you're excited about? Was it something I didn't even mention? 
Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more great content from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.